Welcome guys, my name is Stone Mountain, and not too many views on this. Two 30 second clips of PC gameplay for Battlefront. This was over on EA's Facebook page for Star Wars. It starts out with a jetpack, an LMG type gun being used, directly shooting the AT-AT -AT Walker, as well as this clip of a player calling in an X-Wing. This is really the big thing here. Uh, I'll talk about that as well as a couple other new things, including star cards, some of the customization in this video. But there was one more PC clip of 30 seconds of more gameplay, which you're seeing right here. You can't really tell, at least I think, too much of a difference between the graphics. I don't know if that's just because it's been compressed and everything. There wasn't too much new from this clip, except for that this bubble shield is going to be a power-up that you actually have to pick up. It's not something you can just spawn in with as one of the other star cards. Uh, but I'll talk about that more in a second. First off, I want to draw your attention to the end of this gameplay. This is how we're going to be getting into vehicles. Unlike Battlefield games, it's not just going to be spawning into vehicles, or if you see a vehicle on the ground, you're just going to be able to hop into it, or even jump out of it for that matter. The way that this is going to work is you're going to pick up the ability to get into one of these X-Wings, for instance, and then you're going to have a couple second call-in period. So you'll find some cover, take a couple seconds to call it in, and then you'll just spawn up into the X-Wing. Similarly, getting out of it, you're going to have to hold the button for a couple seconds, the eject button, and rather than just ejecting out and being able to fall down a parachute or anything like that, or jetpack, you're going to be spawned back at base. I see the benefit of this being the guys that are more newbie to first-person shooters or shooters in general, maybe they just like the Star Wars series, they're still going to be able to get into the X-Wings. They're still going to be able to have all those experiences in the at, -AT. It's not going to be like COD where you need to get a kill streak in order to get this thing, right? At the same time with Battlefield, you're not going to have players who are just spawning in into your jet, flying to the middle of the map, hopping out, jet crashes and burns, you gotta wait another minute for it to respawn, right? This is just gonna be as you come across it. The same thing with the Jedis. Those are gonna be the most powerful thing ever. So, giving it random, it could be a good way to do it, but I'm not so sure. And you could also argue, well, there's gonna be specific game modes for flying. At least we know the titles of some of these game modes. There's gonna be dedicated specific things for each thing, but you could say the same thing. Battlefield has air superiority, where it's a flying only game mode, or tank superiority, tanks only people don't really play that as much and it's nice being able to play with everybody and kind of choose your play style but that's just that's just me being picky i'm interested to hear what you guys think about that in the comments in the system maybe it's just because i'm a more veteran gamer but uh not being able to choose what you want to do say i wanted to get better at one specific thing in this giant mode if you want to change your play style for a day say you've been playing infantry a lot this is one of the things that I really like about Battlefield. If you want to start playing some tanks or stuff like that, you can start choosing those vehicles and change your play style. And it really opens up the game, which is why people are still playing Battlefield for over a year now, later, right? And same thing with COD. You've got a lot of longevity from that because a lot of repetition because people are always trying to get better to get those kill streaks and get those power-ups. But when it's just random, you're not going to be able to choose anything at that point. And if you want to, you know, go and even give your teammate the thing say you're just running around you get a jet pickup or x-wing you don't want to go into the x-wing you can't just pass that off at least from what we know so far so some of the potential flaws that i see i like that it is you know more friendly to newbies it'll get more people into the game which is probably the right move especially since this is going to cater to the star wars audience not so much just fps shooters but when you have more to do, some more longevity, it starts becoming more worth it to spend the 60 bucks with DLC, 110 bucks for this game. And that's something that, you know, it's really hard to call, especially this early. But, you know, we're not talking, no campaign. We've seen one of the mission modes. So I'm just interested to see what more we're going to be getting from this, especially because you're talking about Jedis too, also being from this random system. The other thing, though, that we have heard some more about is the star cards, is the name of this customization or loadout system, which you see in the bottom right these three cards three loadouts the guys that were playing at e3 had two set loadouts that they can go in with although they couldn't do it at e3 there will be customization in the full game and it's going to be interesting to see if this is going to be a customization where all right choose any three cards and bring it in you can bring in three grenades two grenades and a jetpack or is it going to be each card has a specific slot it could go in or does each card cost a certain amount in each slot so that's going to be really interesting to see, but there's two types of cards from what we could tell. There's cards that will recharge. So, for example, the jetpack, you use it, it's got to recharge over the next 10 seconds, and then you've got that one-time use once again. And then there was also the card that had a certain number of charges. It didn't necessarily have a cooldown associated with it, but we saw this dome shield 
you could pr hit the button, the shield goes on for a couple seconds, and you lose one of those charges. We also know that there's going to be a bunch of other gadgets and uh, equipment that we haven't even seen yet, and I hope there's a lot of it as long as it, you know, stays balanced out. But I was listening to a lot of interviews, actually, on this, and one of them, the game developer, was talking about some of the things that they were allowed to do in here, right? Because this is with Lucasfilms. They want to stay true to Star Wars, but at the same time, for example, they were talking about a lot of the stormtroopers or just rebels don't actually have jetpacks, but Boba Fett had a jetpack, so the technology was there, and so they are taking some steps to make the game more playable, more fun, by letting it be an equipment that you can bring out. It is technically there, so there will be a limit to kind of where they can go with the gadgets and everything, but I think there's some room there to really bring some unique stuff, and hopefully that'll kind of change the game, way the game is played, and make it even more enjoyable. As for how to get these cards, what we've heard is that as you level up, you're going to be unlocking these. In addition, you're going to get some type of currency, coins, or uh, some type of point system where you can spend these on additional cards. I think this is how you're probably going to get weapons, as well as there was mention of these alien heads being unlocked kind of towards the end of the game, spending your points or currency on that. And this is something that I had pointed out on the original trailer, is that this character's got a green head. This is pretty unique. Uh, that's going to be something that you can kind of work towards towards the end, at least from what we know so far. Which, I like having something like that, but I hope it's not something like it was in Battlefield Hardline, where it's set to $10 million, and it's going to take you 50 hours of gameplay just to get to $1 million. Or, you know, something crazy like that. It takes forever to get there. I think it would be even cooler to have some type of assignment or challenge to do where it's, all right, get an eight-man killing spree or 15-man killing spree or something like that where it kind of becomes more skill-based, hopefully without letting people just boost to it, all right? But that's some of the new information we got. Let me know what you guys think of any of it in the comments down below. Click a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe for some more Battlefront content. And I'll see you guys soon. This is Stonemount64, signing out.